Say what up, man. You missed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got dust on my lens. Because I'm a gangster. If you're going to use microfibers to clean camera equipment, at the very least, you should probably wash your microfibers. Just with water. That's it. Because they leave lint. Lint creates spots on the picture. That are just really fun to watch. Especially when you edit it. Like nobody else probably sees it. Because I'm a gangster. But when I'm editing, I'm like, oh my gosh, you see that spot? I drew that backwards, by the way. Because I'm a gangster. And that was video number three, okay? This is video number four. In video number four, well, let me start over. If you don't know why you're video number four, well, I'll put a tag like right, right here. I think I know how to do that now. Go back to this video if you don't know why you're at video number, number four, okay? Go here if you don't know why you're here. We're gonna be talking about the air system. So, it's pretty straightforward. So the air system starts with a compressor. Pumps up one gallon bounce tank. And then it pressurizes a 30 gallon tank with working pressure, right? Right here. So in between the one gallon tank and the 30 gallon tank, I have a check valve. Reason for that. This hose right here that goes from the compressor to the bounce tank, which would have gone to my original tank, there's just not very much volume in there, right? In your compressor, because it's a gas compressor, there's a load unload valve. If it's an electric compressor, you're going to have an on off switch. They work the exact same way. The only difference is with a gas compressor, it's always going. When your pressure drops, it'll kick up, build. Once you hit the pressure, it'll unload, load, unload, load. Okay. On that load unload valve, it has a, a relief on it. The difference between a relief and a regulator is a relief purges pressure, where a regulator regulates what's going in. So on that compressor, there's always a hiss. It's always until that valve goes down to load. Then it engages and it kicks back up. So, there's not much air volume in that hose. If you run straight to your check valve and you eliminate this bounce tank, your compressor's always gonna <laughs> always gonna load, unload, load, unload, load, unload, load, unload because it's sitting there purging your, your ounce of air, literally your ounce of air that's in that hose, okay? That's why I run a bounce tank. In between the bounce tank and your main pressure tank, you have a check valve. Because of that relief, it'll, it'll vent out your entire system if you don't have this check valve. <laughs> literally, you, you, you shut it down, Until it's ready to load again. Um, the check valve is very important. You you probably don't need a bounce tank if you're. Let me take that back. You definitely don't need a bounce tank <laughs> if you have a, an electric compressor. You just don't need one. Your com your compressor is not running all the time. It's only for gas compressors. So out of my thirty gallon tank. So out of my 30 gallon pressure tank, working pressure tank, it goes into a T where I've got two ball valves. Each side of that ball valve I have a manifold. <laughs> now it's getting fun.
So out of the 30 gallon main pressure tank, you've got your T, which goes in the two ball valves. Okay, those are the symbols for a ball valve. It looks like a, like a, a bow tie, pretty much. The top side of that ball valve, or the back side, whichever way you want to call it, it doesn't really matter, you have a manifold. The manifold has three hoses. First hose goes up underneath the sink. It's a spare air hose with an air fitting. It's nice to have a spare air hose, especially when you're cleaning pads, something like that. Tornador, it's really nice to have right there. Second hose, it's the hose I use to pressurize my, my in quotation marks, spare detail kegs. What I mean by that is a, a detail keg I bring in and I set in the trailer, I'm able to grab that hose quick. Unhook it, set off to the side, get the work. Because um, all my other kegs, I haven't told you yet, but all my other kegs, okay? The third hose, hose number three, goes through a check valve, goes through a regulator. That's, that's a symbol for a regulator, which is the same regulator I'm always bragging about. The coil hose pneumatics regulator. So that's in line there, which goes through another ball valve, which goes to my air reel. Now let me go back. The reason for this ball valve is in case that hose gets a puncture or something like that, I can go up, kick that ball valve, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna empty my tank. Reason for this regulator is so I don't have to worry about this hose being over 90 psi when I run my tornador. That's mostly what I run this hose for is my tornador. And the only time it ever bit me in the butt was when I was doing a detail keg video when I foamed those three cars with a gallon of liquid, okay? I went to go pressurize my keg with my reel and I only got 90 PSI. It's only the time I've ever needed that reel for anything other than my Tornador. Okay, this reel, 100 feet. 100 feet is an awesome length for a reel if, if you're mobile, anything like that. That's the top half. Now let's, let's go back, check valve. Which, in all honesty, this check valve is probably irrelevant. Because um, you'll never backfeed. Just death by eye. But I, I have one, because I'm a gangster. Uh, go back your bottom manifold, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so a lot just happened, including my camera stopped recording. So we're gonna go clear back to the tank. 30 gallon working pressure tank. Comes out, two ball valves. Front ball valve, we've been through. Oh, sorry, the back ball valve, we've been through. Front ball valve, go through, you have a front manifold. This manifold, you have six hoses that come out. Each hose goes to a keg. Um, they're all pretty similar until you get to number six, okay? So, let me, let me go back to keg number one, okay? That's what that is, keg number one. He's got a check valve, next guy's got a check valve, next dude's got a check valve. They all have check valves. Reason being, so when you, you pressure up the system, they'll go through, fill your bounce tank, fill your working pressure tank, start filling these, and the, the pressure it goes and it feeds into these kegs is then locked inside those kegs. So I can go and I, I can I can empty anything back here, anything. I can have a leak, whatever. These kegs are still full, ready to go, because that pressure's been locked right here, okay? Super convenient. Check valves cost a couple bucks. To have that actually in working order when you need it, like when time is of essence, oh my gosh. <laughs> More than happy you have it. So number six, We've got a, another regulator, except th this is an adjustable regulator. There's, there's a difference between the two symbols. Uh, 
It's been a long time since I've played with those. Whatever. Out of that, you have a gauge, okay? So that you know how much pressure is in that hose. Because that the number six keg, okay? My number six keg usually carries glass cleaner. It's the tip of the day. Reason for that, and the reason for the regulated pressure is so that I can only kick three, five PSI to that keg, hook it up to a hose with a sprayer, right? Whenever I need glass clean. That's, that's how long it takes me to fill a bottle, okay? That setup right there. <laughs> Like, just imagine how much time that has saved me, okay? Literally. Anyways, so this, this is the air system, okay? This is the entire air system. While I was out there doing my walk around, there's a couple things I forgot about. Okay? <laughs> On the bounce tank itself, there's a ball valve, there's a gauge, there's a check valve, and there's a, a quick disconnect for different fittings. We'll start at the quick disconnect. That is so I can pressurize my air system off another compressor, because usually it's, it's a female fitting, right? Hook it up to that male fitting. The reason for the quick disconnect number one is because there's two different fittings. Okay, I used to go to different shops where they had different air fittings, so that was easier for me just to use the adapter. Okay, pretty neat. That goes through a check valve. The reason for this check valve is because it's a male fitting. There's no, there's no guts in there to hold the pressure back. I drew that backwards, by the way. So then when it goes in, it pressurizes in and it locks the pressure inside your system. Then you have a ball valve. The reason for this ball valve is to relieve any, any parasitic load off that compressor when you start it. So you can read the pressure on the bounce tank. Okay, she's, she's an old girl, but she starts really well. As long as there's no load in it, okay, it makes, makes it so much easier to start. What up, man? You missed. Yeah. As you can see, I, I just went out there and I fired it up and it hasn't started for weeks now, probably. Well over a month, right? It's first kick, pulling it. Second kick is electric start. There's electric start. Highly recommend electric start generators, compressors, all that stuff. The compressor itself is in a, is an Ingersoll Rand T30. Okay, it's It does 24 CFM at 175 PSI. That's no typo, okay? <laughs> it is a monster. The reason why I even have a compressor that big, because I turned wrenches for a decade, and this is the blower I used when I turned wrenches, okay? This, these blowers, these Typhoons, they are incredible. But they take a ton ton of air. Like this, this blower could empty that compressor. No problem. The compressor could keep up, don't get me wrong, but this could empty it. 
That's that's the flow out of these things. These are still good for some things, but for detailing, uh, Tornador is so much better. And I even get paid by them. So that's the reason why I have such a big compressor. If if you do get one of these compressors, uh, they offer two options now. One has a Kohler engine, one has a Honda engine. <laughs> like I don't even know why I'm even saying this, but get the Honda, okay? I can't. Just saying. Um, anyways, that's video number four. As always, thank you for watching. Hang tight, video number five is coming.